our next speaker today is Riley Bapti from the Kamloops Okanagan region. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. When the population reaches 9.8 billion people by the year 2050, how on earth will we feed all those people? Good morning, honorable judges. My name is Riley Bapti. I'm 17 years old and I've been a part of the Armstrong B4H Club for four years. Today I'm going to talk to you about the future of farming, agri-tech and innovation. I have to admit when first introduced to all the new technological and robotic ideas, I was opposed. My first thought was all the jobs that would be lost. However, after much contemplation, I thought back to when fields were plowed by horse and planted by hand and the difference in production when tractors were introduced in the late 19th century. I think many farmers may feel the same dislike towards moving away from tradition. However, the reality is we are trying to feed an ever-growing population on a shrinking land base, and it is extremely important that we use technology to our advantage. This is how we are going to feed such a huge population. So why not embrace it and be part of the huge change moving forward? With the next generation focusing so much on the environment, and rightly so, these technological advances are how we are going to have more sustainable, environmentally friendly agriculture. For example, experimental inland fish farming produces locally grown saltwater fish to people off the coast. The waste produced is reused and the farm powers itself. This environmentally friendly inland fish farm also reduces food miles, cutting down on carbon emissions. Fish farms on the coast have been known to spread disease to healthy wild fish. And while inland fish farming may not be able to be the sole supplier to landlocked people, it sure helps. Minimizing the use of antibiotics to combat antibiotic resistance is extremely important. That's why technology such as temperature reading ear tags for cattle are so helpful. A blinking red light alerts the rancher when an animal is running a fever. Detecting if an animal is sick for up to three days before they show noticeable signs of illness. Allowing the rancher to treat immediately and allowing the rancher to treat immediately and ultimately, um, ultimately slowing the use of antibiotics and cutting down on how much the animal will lose weight. Microphones over pig pens have the same effect, detecting coughs for up to 12 days before a noticeable illness, allowing the farmer to treat immediately. Some of the most impressive technology comes from the crop yield sector. Drones now have the ability to detect unhealthy from healthy vegetation, telling the rancher or farmer where it needs to be watered. Targeted sprayers have the ability to spray a single weed using up to 90% less herbicides. The most impressive, I believe, is the use of satellites. Satellites now have the ability to read things such as soil humidity, which would be impossible to read with the naked eye, reducing the amount of soil water wastage because the farmer can now read soil, the moisture content in soil. This technology improves crop yield and quality, which is extremely important because we need to get the highest yield from each crop. Perhaps the most advanced technology comes from the dairy industry. New machines now milk up to 100 cows an hour. Machines can detect the quality of milk and what alterations need to be made to their feed. Health problems are detected faster by thermal imaging. Things such as the removal of manure are now done mechanically. So much of the herd information can be found on the farmer's smartphone or computer. Farmers can now have a smaller herd and get just as much milk as they would have from a larger herd just a few years ago. All these not only improve animal welfare, but the quality of life for the rancher as well, allowing them to spend more time with their family and friends. This the most controversial technology today, GMOs, allowing us to be a more flood and drought resistant planet, use less herbicides and pesticides, give us the ability to produce more food in a smaller area, add more profit and value to our crops, and overall be more food, have more food security. Some corn is genetically modified to produce a toxin killing harmful insects, resulting in less use of pesticides and slowing the growth of harmful bug populations and ultimately leading to a more successful corn crop. Recent advancements in GMOs allow a single gene to be changed as opposed to older methods such as transgenic modifications that had uncontrolled alterations to large regions of DNA. This advancement may also curb some of the concerns surrounding GMOs, given that it allows for more control. Personally, I couldn't be more excited to be a part of an era with so much growth and change. 
While moving away from tradition is a daunting idea, it allows for so many ideas to grow. And luckily for us as youth, we get the privilege to have such a, played such a huge role in it during our lifetime. BC is one of the leaders in technology and innovation in the agriculture industry. We are so fortunate to live in a province with so much diversity in its landscape and brilliance in its minds. By the year 2050, the world population is projected to be at 9.8 billion people. In order for us to make such a big change, we need to start right now. Finally, it is important to remember that technology is a tool, not a replacement. It improves herd health and animal welfare, our quality of life, sustainability and efficiency, crop yields, and our production towards feeding the next generations.